Come on, let me hear you say it just once. It's the Riley and Kimmy Show. No! <laughs> no, it was the other thing. Kimmy! I got one name! Kimmy! Are you awake? This is where your companion told me to stop last night. Actually, most of what you said was incoherent. That is so true with Kimmy. Mostly incoherent, especially when uh, she's just waking up. And she has just woken up from a big dog nap before sitting down for episode 432 of the Riley and Kimmy Show. And I am your host, Patrick Riley. Isn't he a gorgeous hunk of superhero? Oh, yes, I am. Thank you. That's right. That's what Kimmy says about me all the time, isn't it? Mm, something like that. <laughs> yeah, right. Welcome to this episode where we talk about all things geek, nerd, and freak. We have a wide range of things uh, on this episode, including a certain celebrity that says a certain movie is cursed, Kimmy. Oh? Any guess what celebrity and or what movie, who would say something is cursed and what movie it might be? Any Any guess? I don't know. All right. It's somebody you do know. Really? And I will say this much. You had an opportunity to meet this person and you declined in the past. Really? Yes, you did. And you'll understand why when I reveal who it is. Mm. Although we've had friends who have met this celebrity. Okay. It'll be interesting. And it wasn't that long ago in Orlando that you had an opportunity to meet this celebrity. Also, one of your boyfriends from the past is coming back. To television, Kimmy. We'll have that on the way. I bet you will be so excited about that. And we'll unfortunately be talking about a death uh, in the world of animation. Uh, Something, somebody big that uh, did pass away that is part of the world of nerdum. And we'll get to that coming up here on 432 of the Riley and Kimmy Show. Right now we're going to the top 10. Really awful science fiction and fantasy movies that everybody should watch at least once, according to an online survey. Just one time, Mm -hmm. okay? Now, I'm curious. What would you think would qualify, if you can name any of these, you don't have to name all 10, of course, because we have all that right on our website at RileyandKimmy.com, but let's see if you got the same kind of mind as these twisted people do. What would be really awful, 10 really awful science fiction and fantasy films That everybody should watch at least once. Can you name one of them? Plan 9. Plan 9 from Outer Space by Ed Wood. You think that's on there? Mm Mm-hmm. Do you think it's at the top slot? Could be. No, it is not. All right. But you are right. It's at number four. Oh. Plan 9 from Outer Space. One of the main reasons why a bad movie might become required viewing is if it's acquired occult status and become part of our shared pop culture heritage. And if it's so bad, it's good, or so incredibly awful that it becomes unstoppably funny and bizarrely fascinating, pushing the limits of artistic expression in ways that a good movie never can, well, Plan 9 from Outer Space, the thriller made by notorious B-movie person who... Ed what? That's right, is considered by many critics and film enthusiasts to be the worst movie ever made. Mm -hmm. An extremely low budget, riddled with continuity errors, featured a badly absurd, some would say amazing plot, and amateurish to a fault is a case study in how not to make a film, and yet is possibly the best and most representative example of so bad it's good in movie making, and also it has insane camp. Actually, it's one of those I did study when I was studying film and stuff, especially when I started very early age. I mean, he gave me inspiration to make movies, Mm -hmm. that thing. Yeah. Right there. I mean, and you know what's interesting? One of my mentors, broadcast mentors, who considers himself a big, uh, you know, film uh, expert, Mm -hmm. uh, he had never seen that film. Really? Never. And I checked with him recently, and you know who I'm talking about? I'm talking about Mr. Fun. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Fun, who grew up in Hollywood, California, and worked in broadcasting, television, and also uh, radio, and uh, worked in Hollywood, had never seen that film. And I I talked with him, I, I think, the last six months, and brought that movie up to him and he had still never seen it wow i'm like what is wrong with you shame on him that's right and he has not seen that great tim burton film it's actually probably one of my favorite tim burton movies of all time Mm -hmm. uh edward with johnny depp and martin landau who did win the academy award landau did for that Uh uh-huh it's fantastic film to check out and you know you can watch that and then watch plan nine 
Yeah. Uh, that's kind of a good complimentary thing to do. There you go. That's kind of a double feature for the weekend coming up. Uh-huh. Make some plans there. Now, can you name another movie that might be on that list, Kimmy, that is in that top ten? Ooh. Now, I'm going to tell you. I'm not even going to do number one, number two, because you've never seen them. Okay. And if anybody wants to find out what those are, just go right to our website at RileyandKimmy.com. You have seen number three, number seven, more than once number seven. Uh, number eight, you have not seen, but you're quite well aware of it. It is current, meaning within the last two years. And one that is at number nine, I think you have seen or at least heard of, I think you've seen it on TV is where I'm trying to place it. I can't remember if it ever aired on TV when I was around you. And I think it did. And of course, number 10, you've never heard of, which is a Stephen King film, the movie he directed. And mm. it's called Maximum Overdrive, based on one of his uh, short stories. That's about truckers, and actually about trucks, and, and, and let's see, machinery that becomes alive. Mm. And he directed it. Okay. So, can you name one of the others? Any clues I gave you there that might say, okay, I know it's going to be that one. Mm. None? Robocop? No, Robocop's not there. It wouldn't be there. Come on. Be nice. Number know. seven, Star Wars. Can, one of the Star Wars films, can you predict? <laughs> can you say which one made it as the worst on the list that is good to watch because it's bad and it's got reasons? Um, which Star Wars one would hit that mark? I would say the first of the last three. Oh, so you're saying episode one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Phantom Menace. Yes. What would stand out to you in Phantom Menace that would make it that worst film jar jar Binks. that's interesting i thought maybe you'd say jake lloyd and him okay now even more than the matrix sequels or terminator salvation and by the way they did not make the list they did not make this list at all this star wars prequel was a colossal let down the long-awaited film turned out to be an undercooked overplotted mess of empty pixels and stiff acting minus points for creating jar jar Binks. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. The most annoying character in the Star Wars franchise. And yet, it's a central point in geek mythos, a movie that everybody has opinions about, and with the expanded universe no longer in continuity, the entire Star Wars universe, which is continuing in full force with Rebels and a slew of upcoming movies, starts with Episode One. So you can't avoid it. Mm -hmm. And you need to know about Star Wars. You need to know about that movie. Okay. I, I kind of agree with him now. That, that one, mm -hmm. number one. Only thing that was redeemable in that movie to me was Darth Maul. Oh yeah. Uh, Ray Parks. Mm -hmm. uh, also Qui Gon. In mm -hmm. some scenes with him and Darth Maul. Uh huh. And Obi Wan. Yeah. That was about it. Jake Lloyd, a little right on the annoying side. Yeah. And uh, Jar Jar Binks. We don't like you. <laughs> I mean, oh boy. Yeah, Jar Jar Binks. Mm -hmm. That that. <laughs> That was about it right there. But if you want to find out that entire list of maybe some geek movies to uh, check out, just because they're bad, but they are good to watch, we have the whole list right on our website at RileyandKimmy.com. He can hear it before it makes a sound. He can sense it before it happens. He can vanish before you realize he's there and he's the last person you'd ever expect. Police suspect the vigilante Daredevil was the one to bring the criminals to justice. Daredevil, the movie. Yeah, and I know you don't like the movie, but I tell you what, it's going to be good news about the TV show. Comicbook.com reports that The Observer has seen the first four episodes of Netflix Daredevil and has posted a review. We have a little sample of it. Here we go. A quote. I know it's still early in the year, but I'm calling it now the most beautifully choreographed fight scenes of 2015. They will be on Netflix, courtesy of Marvel's Daredevil. We've seen the first four episodes, and this show is like no other comic book adaptation on the small screen yet. The beauty of Netflix is the freedom it allows. Daredevil gets as dark as the source material requires. It's so dark, it's almost a better Batman show than Gotham, and that show actually has Batman in it. If nothing else, Daredevil will rule the comic book TV landscape for years to come. Wow. I am looking forward to that. Cool. Yeah. I mean, uh, that, that's I'm really looking forward to. And by the way, just speaking nerd things, I was talking to one of my good friends, uh, the commissioner, David Corporone, about uh, comic book stuff earlier before we recorded 432, and he has an arrow speculation that he'd like to share. He says Diggle will be gone. One of the reasons he knows that is because he's not filming the season finale, which is the reason Stephen Amell 
And uh, what's her name who plays Black Canary could not be in Orlando for Megacon. They had to cancel out because they're doing that finale. But he's here. And, and we know that Stephen Amell posted that a certain character will no longer be on the show. They had to say goodbye. Speculation, Diggle goes to the Suicide Squad. Mm. That's, our, that's the Riley and Kimmy show uh, prediction there. Mm-hmm. And we predict, by the way, all the rumors going around about Damian Wayne being on Arrow is not going to happen. Remember, not that long ago, we saw scenes of Ollie's child. Mm-hmm. Remember? Well, the little one's gotten a little bit older. His speculation is Ra's al Ghul and that kid have gotten involved. And the kid's going to be uh, coming back to cause, well, chaos for Ollie. Because Ollie will turn down Ra's, by the way, if you like Ray's, or Ra's, however you want to call him. Yeah. Turns down the offer. And uh, he sends his kid after him. Okay. So that is our speculation for the arrow. Even though I'm not really looking forward to that one. Mm-hmm. What I'm really looking forward to is the Flash and its season finale. I'll tell you what, they just released a trailer for it. I will uh, post that on our website at RileyandKimmy.com in case you've missed it. It is fantastic to see. And one of the things is you get to see him running in the in the timeline, into, into the Speed Force thing. And he's going back in time and comes across himself. Mm-hmm. And his self notices him. Ooh, mm. what in the hell's going to happen? Mm. I think I know because you know why? I have read the storylines, what's going to be happening in the comic books. And if you want to find out ahead, maybe what kind of chaos is about to happen because Barry does something he wants to do that he should not be doing. And you can find out the outcome of that ahead of time just by going to your local comic book shop and start reading Flashpoint and you'll find out. And if you, you don't know where a comic book shop is, hey, shame on you. I got a couple I can recommend right in Central Florida. Just contact us and we'll uh, we'll say where to go. Or you can go right to our website at RileyandKimmy.com. We have a comic book shop locator. And from there, you will find a comic book shop. But be sure to check that out. You will regret if you don't. It'll be fun, fantastic reading now Kimmy one of your boyfriends one of your boyfriends from the past is uh, going back to television yeah he's done movies but he's mainly I mean he did he he was one of the hottest stars of the 80s on television here's your clue who this person is I got enough problems with this investigation already without playing tour guide to some wide-eyed understudy down here on a weekend pass wait a second no you wait a second you might have commendations up the yin yang in the Bronx or New York or wherever the hell it is you're from. But this is Miami, pal, where you can't even tell the players without a program. Who do you think it is, Kimmy? Oh, that sounds like Don Johnson. That's right, Kimmy. That is Don Johnson. Variety's reporting Don Johnson has locked down the lead role in ABC's pilot, Boom. That's what it's called, Boom. Okay. Now, Variety has learned this, and they say he is set to be the executive producer of the drama. As well. Okay. I don't know if that's a good thing, by the way. Hmm. I, I really, I, I have a little bit of problems when a actor is bankrolling it because hmm. who is going to tell the emperor he has no clothes on? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think you might get a better performance when that's not happening. That's mm-hmm. just, that's just my opinion there. I think okay. there's exceptions to that rule, but there's very few, I think. Now, the drama, boom, centers on the biggest oil discovery in American history, which has triggered a geopolitical shift and an economic boom in North Dakota. I wonder if it's in Minot, where my friends are. Because hmm. remember, in Minot, the slogan is, why not, Minot? not? Freezing's a reason. That's right, and that is truly a slogan. Now, this is the greatest discovery since the American gold rush in 1849. Set in modern-day Wild West, the potential series tracks all the arrival of young and ambitious people and that are coming out to seek a better life to the oil fields where they come across roughnecks, grifters, oil barons, criminals, and fellow prospectors. Now, Don Johnson will be playing the characters. All right, let's see. What was the name of the character he played in Miami Vice? Sonny Crockett. Sonny Crockett. And Sonny Burnett. Because he that was the... And Sonny Burnett. That's right. And do you remember what he played on that other show with Cheech? Ugh, Nash Bridges. Remember that? Well, mm-hmm. this one, he is going to be... His name is Hap. <laughs> yes, Don Johnson's going to be playing Hap, the smart, tough, older figure in an oil town in North 
Dakota. Wow. Now, Kimmy, are you excited to uh, check that one out? What do you think about that? Now, he did, a, I think, a very good performance in Machete. Yeah, I'll and, agree with that. Was it, it was Machete or Machete Kills? It was Machete, uh, right? I don't remember. Yeah, it was Machete. That was the one he was in. Uh-huh. And he was fantastic in that. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if he was acting off of, was it, no, De Niro was in that. Yeah, De Niro was in that as too, as well. So I don't know if that was because he had that, you know, that guy in there or, mm. or not. I don't remember if they did scenes. Yeah, they did. They did scenes together. I remember that. Yeah, because he, uh, he was funneling cash to uh, De Niro's uh, political campaign. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I don't know if that stepped up the bar you know, for him or anything. He didn't seem bored with it. He wasn't just reading lines. He was mm-hmm. actually involved with it, I thought. He was in and Django, too, That's I what think. I was going to get. Yeah, he was with Django and did fantastic, I think, with that. Um, what do you think about this one? Uh, I don't know. I was kind of upset to see this because I was kind of hoping he would... You know, get an itch to start meeting people and go on the uh, celebrity circuit, and I would see him at one of the conventions coming around the corner. Well, that still may happen. Oh no, it won't. Not if he's doing this show. You you don't see this as a hit, a potential hit. No. Yes, no. I think it might. I really? think you might be surprised. I think I think it might. It depends. It depends on who that supporting cast is and they surround him by. You know, and and if he plays like an old, uh, I don't know, like an old Jr. Ewing kind of guy, mm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, maybe more gruffer and mm-hmm. everything. I think he could play that. And it might be kind of interesting. Mm. So, but I, I still wish, I wish I'd see him at Megacon or one of the cons like in Tampa Bay or something. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm a little bit upset he, he's going back to TV. Thanks, pal. Yeah, I'm just a little bit uh, upset with that one. Now, Kimmy, let's go over to somebody who, uh, well, somebody who <laughs> thinks there's a curse out there on a certain movie. Do you have or franchise, I should say. Do you have any clue who that might be or what the movie franchise might be? I'm just guessing here. Okay. Um, Peter Mayhew? Okay. Star Wars? Why would Peter Mayhew think there's a Star Wars curse? Um. Well, there seems to be on Harrison Ford, sort of. <laughs> well, Kimmy, you are sort of right, but you're wrong about the person who is uh, saying there is a curse. I have a bad feeling about this. I've got a bad feeling about this. No, I have a bad feeling about this. I have a very bad feeling about this. I got a bad feeling about this. I have a bad feeling about this. But I have a bad feeling about this. I have a really bad feeling about this. All right, the person who has a really bad feeling about this is Carrie Fisher. Okay. I was going to say, that's the other person from Star Wars I didn't want to meet. <laughs> no, that I have I, the opportunity to meet. I am so upset with you about Peter Mayhew. I, I, I wanted to meet him, and you did not. Shall mm-hmm. we explain why you did not? Go ahead. Because the one time that you were, okay, let's go meet Peter Mayhew, he was eating lunch. Mm-hmm. And he had this big, and I mean, it was big, like pot pie. It was huge, and I didn't want to disturb him. Mm-hmm. I, I felt bad going up there while, while I was, you know, eating pot pie and going. Mm, yeah. I, I didn't want to do that. So I, I left him alone. But I do want to meet him. Okay. But Carrie Fisher, I have no desire to meet ever. I, I, I love Star Wars, you know that. And I, even as a child, when I saw Star Wars, I just never liked her. I mm-hmm. just don't, just don't care for her. And that'll be something I have to get over with on the new movies. But hey, how Carrie Fisher was recently in a car accident and now believes all of the terrible things that have been happening are part of a Star Wars curse. Okay. She says, quote, things happen in threes. That's what she told Britain's Mail on Sunday. Quote, I am about to call co-star Mark Hamill to make sure he's okay. I have a horrid feeling there's a curse going on here. What is funny is that last Sunday it was raining hard in Los Angeles. I was driving to the art store and I got into an accident. It wasn't that serious, and I wasn't hurt, but it's the first car accident I've ever had. I drove home, and that's when the wheel came off my BMW. My assistant told me I could have died if the wheel had come off when I was on the freeway. Then I was watching the news and saw Harrison Ford had his crash. I'm a bit worried. It's a curse of Star Wars. Unquote. Mm-hmm. Now, you know what the scary thing is to me? She's driving. 
Ja. <laughs> that was, that was uh, ooh. <laughs> me, yeah. Uh, that was a, that was a scary part. Yeah. Uh, there. So I I don't think those are cursed. Do you? No. No, not at all. And but you know, uh, it, she is right about the tire falling off though. Mm-hmm. That's not a funny thing. No. I've actually had that happen uh, with one of my cars once, and mm. bam. T- well, I'm actually having more than once. Uh, both times, fortunately, was in an area where it wouldn't hurt anything. Mm-hmm. And once, right in a parking lot, right after they changed the tires, that they hadn't uh, tightened up the lug nuts on one of my wheels, and wham, it came right down. Mm. Yeah, it was something else. So it does happen, that kind of thing. But uh, curse, I, I don't think there's a, a curse at all. No. And you don't no. either, right? Mm-mm. So what's in the news? Well, in the news, Variety reports nine-time Emmy winner Sam Simon, who wrote episodes of Taxi, Cheers, and its Gary Shandling show that was before co-creating the landmark animated series The Simpsons, and eventually becoming a philanthropist, died Sunday of cancer at his home in Los Angeles. He was 59 years of age and was diagnosed with terminal cancer in late 2012. Mm. In 1989, he developed The Simpsons with Matt Groening and James L. Brooks, and he co-wrote nearly a dozen Simpsons episodes during his tenure on the animated comedy, also serving as co-showrunner, character designer, creative consultant, creative supervisor, developer, and writer. And he left the show in 1993 while retaining an executive producer title. Now, the animated sitcom... He said gave him more freedom than live action. Quote, you can draw animals and sets, but the animated characters also have freedom. The Simpsons sometimes do things that real people wouldn't do. Now, even though he left The Simpsons back in 1993, the early years of the series were basically continuous. He was still credited as executive producer as the show continued to generate hundreds of episodes. That's over two decades. And his severance package ensured that he was a very wealthy person who could spend much of his time on philanthropy and on hobbies outside of Hollywood. He was described recently in an interview in the last probably five years as being a true renaissance man. Now, as a writer, Simon also took a stab at feature arena in films pending the 1991 slumlord comedy The Super, starring Joe Pesci. And most recently, he had served as executive consultant on FX's Charlie Sheen's comedy Anger Management in 2012 to 2013, and also directed an episode of the series in 2012. And he will be deeply missed. Mm -hmm. And he, I mean, he... He brought something. He was able to bring something that all all nerds love and enjoy, and it will be remembered for years and years to come. So at least he got to see that, and you know that thing come to life. And and he was and he did so so much good. And if you'd like to find out more about him, we have uh, a link right on our website, which is RileyandKimmy.com. The following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. Well, Kimmy, one month after NBC News suspended. Whom? Brian Williams. Yes. For how many months? Six. That's right. Because of mounting scrutiny of the nightly news anchors' serial (laughs) embellishments, the network's woes have hardly been eradicated as internal disputes and power struggles that predated the exposure of Williams' Iraq war fabrications continue to plague 30 Rock. Now, we have a list of things that are going on that aren't great in the world of NBC and um, Brian Williams. We have the whole thing from Salon.com. And if you want to find out the whole list, just go right to our website at RileyandKimmy.com. Just a couple of them right here. I thought Kimmy would find amusing, but they verified them as true. Okay. These are not headlines. I'm not making these up and saying, guess which one's real. These are all what they say is real. Okay. Number three on their list, Brian Williams sought to succeed David Letterman. (laughs) At the height of last month's (laughs) <laughs> yes. Yeah, I see that look. I wish we were on video right now. Right at the height of everything that happened last month, it emerged that Williams lobbied to succeed Tonight Show host Jay Leno, a bid that NBC executives quickly rejected. But it appears that Williams' comedic ambitions did not stop. Salon reports that after CBS Late Show host David Letterman announced his retirement last year, Williams contacted the CBS head to let him know he was interested in filling Letterman's shoes. Now, it just so happens to be that on Letterman's show back in 2013, that Williams vividly recounted having his helicopter come under fire during a 2003 Iraq invasion, a story now known to be bogus. Wow. Could you imagine him filling in, or not filling in, being the the new host? 
That's bizarre. Yeah, I know. It's one of those you thought if I said, is this uh-huh. real or fake, you would have went, oh, that's fake. No, it was real. Number five on the list, NBC colleagues aren't exactly enamored with Brian Williams. While Williams' comedic prowess and pop culture savvy endeared him to many viewers, his NBC colleagues aren't fans. Salon quotes a senior journalist at the network, quote, very, very few people like him. The phrase you hear constantly, what goes around comes around, unquote. <laughs> Boy, I have a feeling some might want that six months to go a little longer, don't you? Uh huh. Number six, Brian Williams and the person he replaced do not like each other. Who was that person? Tom Brokaw. That's right. There's no love lost between Williams and his predecessor, who reportedly warned NBC executives for years that Williams displayed a troubling pattern of exaggerations and fabrications. Now, details of the frosty relationship, long known to NBC insiders, have gradually seeped into the open over the past month. And Salon provides further insight. Though Brokaw responded to the Williams incident recently with a terse statement saying that his successor's fate was in NBC's hands, Brokaw has played a key role in the network's deliberations over Williams, even canceling a Virgin Islands vacation to help executives handle the mess. For Williams, living in Brokaw's shadow has been nothing short of frustrating. Speaking with Chuck Todd after he was named host of Meet the Press, Brian Williams stated, at least your ghost is dead. Mine is still walking the building. Uh, yeah. And number seven on their list, NBC is still undecided on Williams' fate, although the return of Williams' ally, Andrew Lack, to NBC would seem to mean that Williams' return at the end of his half-year suspension could happen, that such an outcome, though, is not a done deal. NBC sources tell Salon that NBC's Universal CEO, Steve Burke, has truly not made up his mind about Williams' fate. Hmm. I hope he does not come back. I like Lester. That's right. Lester Holt. I want him there. I've been a big fan of Lester's for years uh, since way back in 2001. Who doesn't like Lester? He That's seems right. like a really likable guy. I agree. And I say give it to Lester and yeah. and uh, give the big, uh, you know, don't even don't even acknowledge him anymore. Just he's gone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just, you know. Cut the the new promos and everything that's Lester, and let's just move on. He's lost all credibility. I mean, Facebook is full of those memes. Yeah, I was going to say, you know what he kind of reminds me of? He kind of now reminds me of being Les Nessman. Look, I went to the trouble of putting these lines here to indicate the walls of the private office a news director should have. I would appreciate it if you would be kind enough to observe them. What's wrong with him? I don't know, Herb. Boy, guy gets a... Gray Hog Award, and he suddenly gets snooty on us. Yeah, he's he's sort of like Les Nesman now, hmm. don't you think? Hmm. Now, you're stating that you were going through some of these social media things and about him, mm-hmm. and that some people don't even know who he is, right? Mm-hmm. They're like, who is this guy? There's a meme about him every 10 seconds, you know? And <laughs> I, I think you were showing me probably, I don't know, maybe a half dozen the other night. Oh, yeah, there was, on, on there was one he was reporting he was shot down by Boba Fett with Harrison Ford in the airplane over the golf course. And there's another one um, showed him with the <laughs> live on the moon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it, they, they can't, he's got to go. Yeah. You know, you can't bring that back. Right. And especially I have a feeling I haven't seen the latest ratings, the, uh, you know, uh, for the, uh, the, the newscast. But Lester has to at least maintain, if not gained, uh, mm-hmm. with him being gone. You know, mm-hmm. so hey, just you know, this is this is a no brainer. Just uh, you know, let him go, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Yeah. Bring in, Do- hey, bring in Donald Trump, and he could just <laughs> he could have Brian Williams sit down in front of him, and he, you know, he could just fire him uh-huh. you know, for NBC, right? And they can make it a they can make it an episode. Will he be part of NBC or not? Find out tonight on prime time with Donald Trump. Man, think about that. Will uh-huh. he say you're fired? Or you're not. I mean, come on, man. Think about that. Uh-huh. That'd be the way you can find out who the new anchor. Will it still be him or will Lester Holt to get it? Wow. I like that. Mm-hmm. Th- that's cool. Yeah. That's good. You can borrow that, NBC. You, you can you can borrow that. Thank you for listening to the Riley and Kimmy Show 432. This episode means there are 431 others before it and are all available right on our website at RileyandKimmy.com. When you go to our website, make sure you check out our social media links. Friend us, follow us, like us. If you do that, we do the same right back with you. It's the end. The end of the path I started us on. Nothing lasts forever. Find archive podcasts 
of the Riley and Kimmy Show at RileyandKimmy.com.